Daryl Hall and John Oates, one of music's most iconic duos. But how did this legendary partnership even begin? Daryl Hall is finally sharing the real story of how he met John Oates, and trust me, it's not what you think. Ready to get into the moment that changed music history? Let's get into it. However, first, let's look at a little journey between John Oates and Daryl Hall. John Oates was born on April 7, 1948, in the bustling heart of New York City. His mother was Italian, while his father hailed from Gibraltar, bearing a mixed heritage that included Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, and Moorish influences. Raised in the quiet town of North Wales, Pennsylvania, Oates found comfort amidst the noisy countryside, a sharp contrast to the vibrant streets of his birthplace. His journey began at North Penn High School, where he balanced academics with wrestling, serving to be co-captain of the 1965-66 team. Though he found success on the mat, Oates turned down opportunities to wrestle in college, standing out for Temple University in Philadelphia instead. The charm of city life called to him, and he wrestled briefly for the Temple Owls before the weight of competition became too heavy to bear. In 1966, the young artist took a significant leap into the world of music, recording his first single, I Need Your Love, with a group called The Masters. This was the real beginning of a life-changing journey in the music industry. After graduating from high school in 1966, Oates crossed paths with Daryl Hall, who would later be pivotal in shaping his future. Apart from this, he was a senior at Temple and a budding musician, and together they navigated the rocky waters of college bands, ultimately forming the iconic duo Hall and Oates. By 1972, Hall and Oates signed to Atlantic Records, setting the stage for a career that would eventually lead to their becoming one of the most successful duos in pop rock history. Their music was a combination of soul, rock, and pop, which resonated with millions since they recorded 21 albums selling over 80 million units worldwide. However, beneath the surface of this commercial success, there was a complex trap of emotions and challenges. Their relationship with fame was a double-edged sword. They scored 10 number one records and over 20 top 40 hits, but with that came the pressure to maintain their position. Their participation in the original Live Aid concert and the charity single We Are the World in 1985 further cemented their status of being influential artists. Yet, it also hit a point where they had to balance artistic integrity with commercial expectations. Despite three decades of chart-topping success, Oates released a solo album in 2002's Funk Shui. This long wait hinted at a deeper yearning within him and a struggle to break free from the identity that came with being part of a duo. Furthermore, his artistic journey took various turns, including collaborations and solo projects. Still, the shadows of Hall and Oates loomed large over his career. In 2008, Oates released 1,000 Miles of Life, further exploring his musical identity. He ventured into diverse projects, collaborating with artists like Jamie Cullum on the song Greatest Mistake for Handsome Boy Modeling School's 2004 album. His evolution of growing up to be a musician seemed endless. Still, with every step forward, there was an underlying sense of struggle like he was trying to carve out a space for himself in a world that always saw him to be half a famous pair. Oates's 2013 single, Stand Strong, was more than just a song. It was a story of his inner battles and willpower in adversity. Released being a part of Good Road to Follow, this song embodied the struggles of many artists. In 2015, Oates shared Another Good Road a DVD and live CD showcasing his artistry. Filmed in a Nashville studio, it revealed his musical talent and glimpses of his personal life, including rare footage of his home in Woody Creek, Colorado. This was a moment of vulnerability, 
exposing the man behind the music to an audience that had long adored him from afar. On March 28, 2017, Oates published his memoir, Change of Seasons, co-written with Chris Epting. This candid practice offered insights into his life, revealing struggles, victories, and the emotional roller coaster that comes with being in the spotlight. It was a brave move because sharing one's story often requires peeling back layers and memories that many would prefer to keep hidden. In 2018, he released an Arkansas album with his backing band, The Good Road Band. This project served to be abridged to his roots, reconnecting him with the traditional Delta, country blues, and ragtime music that had first inspired him. Hence, this was the majestic return to his beginnings and an attempt to rediscover the joy of making music on his terms. But life, like music, is filled with unexpected twists. In November 2023, a dark cloud loomed over Oates's career when Daryl Hall filed a lawsuit against him, accusing him of betrayal for planning to sell his share of their duo's publishing. This public dispute shattered the image of a harmonious partnership, revealing the fragility that can lie beneath the surface of long-term collaborations. Oates, in response, called Hall's statements inflammatory, hinting at the emotional turmoil behind their fallout. Just when this wasn't enough, Oates also appeared in season 10 of The Masked Singer Being Anteater, showcasing his playful side even amid personal and professional turmoil. However, his journey on the show ended during the Group C finals, leaving behind many unsolved mysteries between the duo. On the other hand, in his personal life, Oates experienced both joy and heartache. He married former model Nancy Hunter before finding love again with Amy, with whom he shares a son, Tanner. Unfortunately, they split their time between the calming landscapes of Woody Creek and the bustling energy of Nashville, attempting to find balance amidst their busy lives. His friendship with Hunter S. Thompson added a unique chapter to his story, which was further labeled by the shared experiences and deep conversations until Thompson's tragic suicide in 2005. Oates's discography is vast, showcasing his artistic evolution from the early days of Hall & Oates to his solo endeavors. From the 1972 debut of Whole Oates to the upcoming 2024 album Reunion, each work displayed musical growth and the shadows of longing, nostalgia, and the quest for identity. The success he found with Hall and Oates always looms large. Apart from this, his life and career illustrate the delicate balance between artistic expression and personal fulfillment, shedding light on the hidden struggles behind the glittering facade of stardom. In a world that often glorifies success, Oates's tale reveals the deeper truths of life, the pursuit of passion, the pain of loss, and the relentless search for self amidst the noise of fame. On the contrary, Daryl Hall, the main brain behind the duo Hall and Oates, was born in the quiet town of Pottstown, Pennsylvania, where he found his roots in a family deeply tied to music. His parents, both musically inclined, shaped his early years, nurturing a talent that would one day touch millions. His father was part of a choral group, and his mother, a vocal coach, set the stage for a journey filled with melodies and rhythms. After graduating from Owen J. Roberts High School in 1964, Hall began to write his own musical journey, but little did he know the heartache accompanying his rise. While attending Temple University, he immersed himself in music, studying diligently. He crossed paths with the greats, including Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff. But it was during his first semester, amidst the vibrant Philly soul scene, that he found his voice. Alongside four fellow students, he formed the Temptones. This vocal harmony group quickly became a beloved part of the local scene. Their harmonies danced through the Uptown Theater, where they faced off against other talented groups, 
including the Ambassadors and the Delphonics. The thrill of competition and camaraderie filled the air. Still, Hall sensed the bittersweet nature of pursuing dreams with each note sung. The Temptones recorded a handful of singles, their sound echoing the hopes and dreams of a generation. Yet, when they performed at the Uptown Theater, Hall formed connections with renowned artists, including Smokey Robinson and The Temptations. Each meeting opened doors, but with every collaboration came the weight of expectation. In 1967, fate brought Hall together with John Oates, a fellow student at Temple. Their initial encounter, sparked by a fight at a dance, marked the beginning of a partnership that would redefine the music landscape. Just when they fled the chaos together, a bond formed that would withstand the tests of time, though shadows loomed on the horizon. After Oates transferred to another school, Hall didn't allow the separation to dim his ambitions. He dropped out of college in 1968, embarking on a path that led him through various musical endeavors. His time with the short-lived rock band Gulliver was a mix of hope and uncertainty. The band's haunting sound resonated, but never quite reached the stars. Despite these struggles, Hall's resolve only strengthened. He recorded songs with others, building a foundation that would eventually lead to the legendary duo Hall and Oates. In 1972, Hall and Oates finally secured a record contract, marking a turning point. Their journey, however, was not without obstacles. Signed to Atlantic Records, they faced challenges, but their hard work began to bear fruit. Their second album, Abandoned Luncheonette, released in 1973, yielded the iconic single, She's Gone. Its poignant lyrics captured the essence of longing and love lost, climbing to number. Seven in the U.S., top ten, on a re-release in 1976. But when they tasted success, the music industry carried a fickle partner, and the duo soon faced the reality of being dropped from the Atlantic. In the relentless pursuit of success, they signed with RCA Records, where they experienced a meteoric rise. From the mid-1970s to the mid-1980s, Hall and Oates dominated the charts, their melodies echoing in the hearts of fans. Hits like Rich Girl, Kiss on My List, and Man Eater became anthems of the era. Though filled with catchy rhythms, each song carried an undercurrent of melancholy, reflecting the complexities of love and life. Their sixth album, Rock and Soul Part One, solidified their place in history. Hall's life outside music was often a tumultuous blend of joy and sorrow. His marriage to Bryna Lublin in 1969 was a fleeting moment of happiness that ended in 1972. He converted to Judaism for her, but the relationship ultimately faded. His nearly 30-year relationship with songwriter Sarah Allen brought both inspiration and heartache. Their bond led to the creation of beautiful music, but the pressures of fame and the tragic loss of Allen's sister weighed heavily on them. The breakup in 2001, though amicable, felt like a deep cut, leaving Hall grappling with the echoes of their shared past. In the backdrop of Hall's professional achievements, he also faced personal demons. With its glitz and glamour, the music industry often concealed the toll it took on his mental well-being. He battled loneliness amid crowds, feeling the weight of expectations and the burden of his fame. Yet, he poured his heart into his music, using it to be a cathartic release. Hall's forays into solo projects were marked by moments of brilliance. Collaborating with Robert Fripp on Sacred Songs showcased his artistry beyond the duo. The album was met with critical acclaim, but success came at a price. Hall's emotional struggles seeped into his work, and songs like Dreamtime resonated with listeners, reflecting a longing for connection amid the chaos of life. His participation in global music events, including Farm Aid and We Are the World, 
showcased his commitment to causes. Still, behind the scenes, he felt the world's weight pressing down. With the passage of time, Hall carried on to explore new avenues. His passion for restoring historic homes became a creative outlet. In 2008, he purchased the 18th century Bray House in Maine, immersing himself in restoration. Each brick laid seemed to symbolize his desire to rebuild not just homes, but fragments of his life. Hall also hosted the television show Daryl's Restoration Overhaul, showcasing his love for preservation. The series provided a glimpse into his world and revealed the solitude often accompanying his endeavors. Hall's online show, Live from Daryl's House, launched in 2007, served as a platform for collaboration and creativity. Featuring musical guests from various genres, it offered a sense of community. Yet, behind the scenes, Hall grappled with the impermanence of relationships. Each performance recapped the connections made and lost over the years. Despite the joy of making music, the specter of solitude loomed large. In November 2023, a rift emerged between Hall and Oates, casting a shade over their long-standing partnership. Hall filed a lawsuit against Oates, claiming betrayal that Oates planned to sell his share of the duo's publishing. Their bond, once unbreakable, faced the strain of financial disputes. When the headlines blared, it was like the music that had once united them now served to be a backdrop for their fractured relationship. Oates described Hall's statements as inflammatory and outlandish, highlighting the painful reality that even the closest friendships can unravel in moments of tension. Despite the turmoil, Hall's passion for music never waned. He resumed releasing new material, including Laughing Down Crying, an album that explored themes of loss and hope. Each note carried the weight of his experiences, reflecting a life marked by triumphs and heartaches. The world saw Hall to be a musical icon, but beneath the surface lay a man navigating the complexities of life, love, and friendship. On the other hand, with the restoration of his home, Hall seemed to be seeking comfort in the past, hoping to rebuild pieces of himself that had been lost along the way. His fans echoed a timeless truth. The heart, much like a house, needs care and attention to flourish. While the music industry offered him fame, it also demanded sacrifices. Each note played, each song written, became proof of his journey. Let's dive into the moment when Daryl Hall finally opened up about how he met John Oates, a meeting that would change the course of music history. It all began in the heart of Philadelphia, back when both were just starting, unaware of the legendary partnership that awaited them. Daryl was promoting his first single with his group, The Temp Tones. He explained, We named ourselves not for the fame temptations, but after our college, Temple University. The band was eager to perform at a local event, excited and hopeful for what the night would bring. But as the evening unfolded, things took an unexpected turn. Backstage, chaos broke out, leading to a full-blown fight that brought the entire event to a sudden halt. The show was canceled, leaving everyone frustrated. And it was in the midst of all this that Daryl found himself in an elevator with a stranger, none other than John Oates. Neither of them could have known that this chance encounter born out of chaos, would spark one of the greatest musical duos in history. Hey, how are you doing? Daryl said, not knowing then that this momentous encounter would mark the start of a deep-rooted friendship. Amazingly, both were first-year students at Temple, and we quickly discovered their shared passion for music. Their friendship blossomed, leading them to become roommates and escape campus life together. They spent countless hours playing songs, writing, and dreaming about what could be. However, Daryl's college journey took an unexpected turn. He said, 
I was pursuing a music degree, juggling student teaching and late-night gigs to make ends meet. But one day, my supervisor presented me with a choice. Continue teaching or embrace the life of a musician. That was the life-changing moment, or better decision, which felt like a cruel fork in the road. Without a second thought, he walked away from his degree, choosing the uncertain yet fascinating world of music. With time, John graduated with a degree in journalism, while Daryl embraced the artist's life. Together, they both decided to focus solely on songwriting. With my mandolin and John's guitar, they both played in small coffee houses, weaving their stories into melodies. Those early days felt like wandering through a fog, searching for a break that seemed perpetually just out of reach. Their first album was a collection of the scattered thoughts and ideas that made room in their minds. It was an assortment of songs that displayed their journey but still needed direction. On the other hand, these songs didn't resonate with audiences. Then came the album Abandoned Luncheonette, a project that sparked a slow burn of success. They planted seeds in the dark, hoping for the light to touch them. She's Gone became a track representing their struggles, wrapped up in the shadows and waiting for their moment to shine. Moreover, it took years for that song to bloom into the hit they had always dreamed it could be. Yet, amid our growing success, the music business revealed its darker side. Both of them found themselves in a complicated dance with the industry. The joy of creating was overshadowed by questions about where the money went. Despite the hit singles and albums, the financial rewards never seemed to pay off their hard work. Consequently, Daryl often found himself bewildered by the numbers, wondering why the fruits of our labor felt so distant. Fast-forwarding to when the duo climbed higher, Daryl couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. It felt like the duo was performing in a grand play, yet the script seemed to be written by someone else. What happened to that money? Became a refrain that haunted our conversations. Now, Daryl wished he could have answered that question. Still, the truth was that the intricacies of the business overshadowed them. The blame was a heavy burden on John and me for not paying closer attention. Through it all, music was their lifeline. Playing live became the duo's true source of income and joy. It was where they both found a connection, where the world faded away, leaving only the notes they played and the stories they shared. This shows that two creative brains can produce blockbuster music series if they meet. Which of the Hall & Oates songs is your favorite? Do tell in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.